Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And as always, before we jump into today's topic and welcome to today's guests, please don't forget to get us a cup of tea or coffee. Helps us out a lot. And now I'm very happy to see uh all the way from california i guess it's jason Hi, yeah. jason tipton from zero hour so great to see you man and uh it's um it's it's great to talk to you uh about music again absolutely man no it's been like we were mentioning it's been a while man so it's really cool to catch up and do it in this way prog talks is cool man so i like what you guys are doing man so and keeping our genre and our music going, man. That's what we need. So, thank you so much. Um, I mean, you've been keeping the genre and the music going as well over the last years, um, even though not exactly with Zero Hour. Um, right. yeah. After the first run of, uh, I mean, the, the the story of Zero Hour um, um, for the first part until uh, 2008. Uh, there's been a couple of albums with a couple of singers. And um, then there has been some changes, obviously, with Troy, your brother, um, yeah. and his uh, his illness. Uh, so he he had to stop playing bass. And then right. there was abnormal thought patterns, right? Then you did synthesis, synthesis, also with Eric Roswald, who was on yeah. the first couple of Zero Hour albums. And then uh, just in the last couple of years, uh, we had uh, the two first albums of the new uh, amazing, really cool project, A Dying Planet, right? Yeah. Um, that was also from you, uh, like with you as the main guitarist and also the main composer for the most part, right? And yeah, yeah, on that one, yeah, I did uh, <laughs> a lot more than I, yeah, because uh, Paul is an amazing, amazing lyricist and, but, but, he was so busy and it kind of fell into my hands. It's like, okay. So then I was like writing the lyrics, which is something I try to avoid at all costs because <laughs> after the music, I'm pretty exhausted. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's nice to give it to somebody else and give their perspective of the material. But, um, but it was, it was good. You know what I mean? I, I was just going in and I was hearing the melodies as, you know, opposed to say, uh, with Eric, you know, I just know Eric's going to do his thing or something, so I could just throw it that way or whoever. <laughs> so, but then uh, I was like, okay, well, let me just think of these melodies and work it on my own and also do the lyrics. And uh, it came out – no, I, I was happy how it came out. It was something I want to avoid in the future if possible, but if I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah you, you're obviously talking about uh, the second – a dying planet album when the skies are gray that dropped last year and yeah. uh, but now you're back with the uh highly yeah. anticipated zero hour reunion album right yeah. um agenda 21 uh just came out on on uh, may 13th and um yeah it's been a while it's been what 12 years uh uh yeah since the a long, long time I mean, 14, 14 years since Dark Deceiver, right? <laughs> yeah, it's gotten to that point where I even eliminate from even thinking about how many years ago it is at this point, right? So, yeah, it's been a long period. But, uh, gosh, it feels so good to be back. It does because, uh, I, you know, it, it was the right timing of everything and things just kind of aligned itself to making it work out in this way. I mean, Zero Hour is a big part. I mean, it's... It's always been my biggest love of the thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, obviously, due to the certain situations, like you mentioned earlier about my brother, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't continue, at least at that time. And even though my brother's been the biggest supporter telling me to get back, get back, get back. And I was just being very resisting of it. But, um, but 
You can never say never. Uh, I've just learned <laughs> that one right there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when you were working on the on the uh, dying planet stuff on the on the two dying planet stuff in the last years, did you already um, like work on on some new zero hour stuff on the side, or or was that just like very very recently and 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 uh, so and the album came together very quickly then? How? No. how It was real recently, actually, um, because uh, I did have the uh, Dying Planet stuff uh, all put together before. But because of the pandemic and everything, it just came to a situation where I was like, well, I mean, if, if I want to go back to where I was speaking to Raul when I met up with him at one of his performances, and it all kind of sparked there, Because he mentioned to me, he said, like, hey, man, if you are going to do something, you know, I'll play drums on it. And I remember him being such a beast. I mean, when we did the support thing with Liquid Tension and they were, you know, his band at the time, Sun Cage, I would hear him, you know, when he's just hitting those drums and everything. But I could hear him making these grunting noises as he does it. I'm like, man, that's so badass, and that's super serious. I like that, you know. Man, he was amazing, you know, and uh, such a. I love the guy. He he really brought everything back for me for zero hour. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about it at that point, but when he said that, that's where it all started sparking. And then I just started saying, well, you know, I I feel good about doing this material, and I was so ready to get back on six strings and things and go kind of channel the old Towers of Avarice kind of feel. You know what I mean? Because I have been playing seven and eight strings for the longest time since then. You know what I mean? And I love my Gibson Les Pauls. And I'm like, you know, I love the tone of it and it's inspiring. So it felt fresh to do something like that. And yeah, how it just kind of came together. Then Rule mentioned Andreas, and then my buddy Wayne, uh, Wayne Joyner, who was very instrumental in a lot of things that I'll mention later, he even said, you, dude, Andreas, that, that's the guy, you know, and things like that. So how things kind of came together, and then there was a thing where Eric said on uh, Facebook that I caught, and this was all in probably the same couple of weeks, he, he put up reflections from the Towers of Avarice and said, anyone looking for a singer, ha, ha. <laughs> it was just too bizarre you know it was coincidental that this was all going on at the same time and so i think the all the signals were just telling me hey you know this this is your moment to do this so yeah so so you you uh dropped a, a message to eric and said yeah i'm looking for a singer <laughs> yeah yeah it was, well you know i just you know it was just The timing was just happening in that way. And I said, hey, man, you know, I've been thinking about putting Zero Hour back together. Okay. If you're interested and I want to do it right, I want us to push everything, even if that means doing live performances, whatever, because I just don't see the point otherwise. You know what I mean? And it's totally fine if you don't, <laughs> you know, I get, you know what I mean? So, but he said, yeah. He said, yes, yes. And he said he'd been taking guitar lessons and things to further, like, you know, his musicianship and things of that nature. And I thought that was really cool. I said, well, great. You know, let's let's put this together. And uh, very quickly, you know, um, I think because of the long period I had off, I mean, ideas just came really easy for me. I think I wrote everything and tracked everything in like two months. It was like wow, kind of really quick process. I mean, I was surprised and it was cool because rules. Oh man, this is awesome. You're just <laughs> throwing this my way. And then I, the, the musicians with, with rule and Andreas, they were snapping it out as well really quickly. So I was wow. like, wow. This is, it was a nice flow. The vibe was like, and it was exciting. We're all excited and saying things to each other to keep the enthusiasm up. And yeah, it just, uh, it came together quickly that way. Yeah. So yeah, you, you already mentioned uh, the Towers of Avarice, uh, which was, uh, of course, the second Zero Hour album. Um, 
back then in uh, at the beginning of the 2000s around 20 years ago <laughs> yeah. but yeah. but but you know this is this is uh i would still consider it one of the the um the um, technical prog metal classics of that era um so how was writing songs with with that in mind like trying to 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 hearken back to that era um nowadays like 20 20 20 years later was was it was it uh yeah was it naturally to to channel some of uh, some of the magic that happened back there and and of course mix it with influences or with sounds that you've been exploring since like like some of the more more melodic stuff more atmospheric stuff that you yeah. yet that you also kind of explored on on synthesis for example right yeah you know i mean because uh yeah <laughs> i always have to bring it up because synthesis was completely different in my book because we didn't even have a double kick in any of the sequences or anything so when i heard people say it's i was like zero i was like well, you gotta be kidding me <laughs> but, all right you know what i mean i mean but zero hour you know it was about the riffing all the time, like the musicianship of the, guy, the three guys, you know, the rhythm section, myself, just bringing our riffs and, and just going one after another, you know, I mean, that was the exciting part of it, you know, and it, it's hard to write a continuously good riff without kind of repeating things, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, of course, we do have um, some of our songs that do fall in a little bit of a format, but that was kind of the cool formula about Zero Hour. It was like a nonstop kind of progression of something new to listen to as you go on, you know, something to discover. And it, it's, it's good for the memory bank because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's keeping me on my toes with all that stuff along with all of us, but it was easy, man. I, I mean, I will, uh, you know, it really was easy to channel everything and kind of go, I, I am a different guitar player from what I was back then, obviously. I mean, it's a, a gosh, I hope so anyways, you know what I mean? Because uh, I've, I've changed a lot in my playing, but yeah, but I love that stuff, man. I am definitely a progressive metal player. I'm a bit of a chameleon of, of many styles that I could do, you know, um, but that's what I love because it's the freedom of the music where you can put anything in there, you know what I mean? And uh, make it in, I always kind of see it in, some of our a film score aspect with, you know, landscapes and everything you're building off of that and having these vi envisions of what you want to put together format um, that's continuous and has a landscape. I mean, hard to explain in some ways because my brain runs fast in that way. And there's a lot of things I want to say about it, but can't quite get it out. And it's easier for me to do it musically. So <laughs> you know what I mean, so yeah. Um, it was easy to channel it, man. And uh, I, I it, it was a long period off. And uh, after kind of hearing some things, you know, I hadn't heard Towers of Aversay a long time and then kind of stumbling across things like that, you know, hearing it again, I was like, oh yeah, this, I know all about this stuff. This is, <laughs> this is in my wheelhouse. So yes, it wasn't, wasn't any issues, you know, it felt pretty, pretty easy. Um. What I felt when listen, listening to the album was that, um, yeah, part of the, the, the magic or um, what made it so good in my book was uh, that exact uh, fusion of the classic uh, Towers of Avarice um, angular riffing nonstop thing but right. in in informed with with a lot of the melodic sensibilities of the, of your later projects um, yeah that's yeah and that's nice to hear because uh you know i thought i that's what was put together on this particular release but you just don't know until you hear it actually i mean because sometimes what what your ideas in your head and what you're hearing maybe it's not everybody else is hearing that. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, I wanted to have that melodic approach, you know what I mean? And some of us, um, you know, I love melody 
you know, I mean, and it's just the one point, I mean, yes, I love technical things as well, but if I'm not digging the melodies and what's, you know, if it doesn't have a flow, you know, I mean, it's, there's some amazing artists out there who could just do this crazy stuff over and over again. <laughs> and, uh, but I can't say it's exactly melodic, you know what I mean? And I, I, I like it, but for me, I have to have that melodic side in there. You know what I mean? Also, it's just the way with our, you know, Eric being such a, a really a great vocalist and everything, you, you got to give the freedom of all that to let him do his melodic side as well, you know? So, yeah, I, I'm i glad um, you've been, and I'm seeing that because my brother, uh, <laughs> he sends me reviews saying, hey, have you seen this review? I mean, he's the <laughs> one that's kind of kept me in touch with everything. So it's been really cool. More, wow, yeah, no, that's great, man. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, wonderful. Um, thinking, thinking about that particular time, uh, around the turn of the millennium when when i was like i was just starting to get into prog metal when i was like teenage uh metal had uh who grew up with classical music so obviously i was very much drawn towards uh prog metal right away um back then there was there was a lot of momentum going on i think with with particularly uh us bands uh doing progressive metal a couple of labels um Uh, pushing that as well mm -hmm. and uh, there has been in that uh, period of time there has been like a, like a pretty distinct and precise US prog metal sound which was kind of melodic and and um I I, I don't know what 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 else I, I wouldn't know how else to describe what made it US prog metal but there was this kind of sound and and there's still people referring to that sound which which is nowadays more or less a bit described maybe as traditional prog metal yeah, okay. uh, of course mm -hmm. since then there's, there's there's been so much going on and 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 so many new more modern uh, right. uh, 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 trends uh, followed after And right. and also th this uh, this particular brand of uh, traditional prog metal has kind of fallen a bit out of fashion. I I, I would say in the in the prog metal scene in general, what I see uh, in 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 the uh, yeah what, what what I see in the prog metal scene, right. and uh, so I think it's 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 particularly um, refreshing and cool to see. Um, to see some old artists popping up and 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 still going strong so to speak or Absolutely. coming back um, right. what 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 have you been listening to over the last uh, years and 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 did you also kind of um embrace more um more recent um musical trends within the scene Or, or did you kind of stick stick to your your old favorites and uh, and this kind of sound? I think you have a lot of your old favorites that always still resonate with you, no matter what. Because I mean, those guys who stand the test of time. Uh, I mean, goodness gracious! I mean, you're going back. I mean, I love uh, well. Mashuga, Cynic, Dream Theater. I mean, we were like, you know, those bands back in the day. Just, and and they're still amazing. You know what I mean? They're still the guys, you know what I mean? So, uh, but I did get into like Animals as Leaders and Periphery and, you know, that came a little. And now, you know, obviously there's some it Tezrak. I really like Tezrak a lot. I think they're amazing. Um, so there is a lot of bands. It, 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 where it kind of came shifting, where it was just, you know, all right, I guess this is where progressive is kind of going at this point. You know what I mean? And, and I did embrace it and I liked what I was hearing, you know, but I've always been a, a metal guy too. I mean, I go back and I love listening to Richie Blackmore's rainbow with rising, you know, that, and with Dio and everything. I mean, I'm still, you know, I still love the black Sabbath albums, a sign of the Southern cross, <laughs> you know, all these cool, <laughs> you know, I mean, some of the vocals on all that stuff was just amazing. You know what I mean? And, uh, and the music, just, just that sound. So the new stuff, yes, there are some bands that I got into, but I was still loving Pat Metheny group 
as well, like some of the older stuff that I felt was very progressive back when, when you listen to travels or anything with their long compositions and everything. And so I've had a little mix of, of everything, you know, and then Tool is still around and Tool was still doing some great material, you know, and, um, and of course I'm always, I obviously still love the older stuff because I'm like still one of those guys that are like, Hey, is Blue Murder ever going to return? And are they ever going to, you know, because I'm a big John Sides fan. And to me, that was just the most amazing stuff. You know what I mean? Um, uh, sp speaking of a band, every everyone is thinking if they ever will return. Um, and one I would put into a similar category with the Towers of Everest because it was around the same time and it was very technical. Um, would be Spiral Architect, right? <laughs> right. That would be a, you know what, man? We had it. There was a moment I remember because we were on the same label. And there was a moment where, and, and I wish it would have happened, where we could have done a tour when they were going to go out for Prog Power and maybe do some shows together with those guys. Oh, and that would have been amazing. Yeah, That's the one. <laughs> yep. Skeptics yep. Universe. <laughs> and I know that they were kind of, I mean, there were some updates that were kind of going back and forth, and I think they were thinking about doing it. I know some weird things were going on with the camp as well, so I don't know. that. I was hearing from other people and I don't know, but uh, you know, but yeah, that would have been, that would have been cool. Now I don't know if it's just too far. I mean, well, we came back, so it's, it's possible. It's <laughs> Any, possible. But anything is possible. <laughs> anything is possible because I, I, I never thought, I thought it was done, you know? Um, but yeah, it would be, it would be really cool to see what they I mean, they were cool, man. So yeah, they would be really cool. And well. and uh, uh, Psychotic Waltz came back as well with a with a new album. Right. So <laughs> anything's possible, you know. Anything is possible. I mean, I I would love to hear what they what they do. I mean, there was a certain thing where they did have a bit of a a sound all their own for that particular release. Yeah. So can they capture that? I'm sure they could. You know, if they channel in the right. I mean. It's been a long period of time, and if they're ready to do something like that and have a full-on commitment, they definitely can. So it would be interesting. You know, I would love to see it happen. That would be great. You know, I would listen for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, earlier, you mentioned that that when 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 you started getting serious about thinking to get zero hour, zero hour back together, you said. Uh, if you do it, you want to do it right. And and when you talk to Eric, uh, especially, and you said, yeah, you 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 would love to to get back on stage and 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 play the stuff live. So is yeah. there is there anything already in the works behind the scenes that any any hopes, um, any uh, planning going on? We've been actively talking. To we've we've been getting approached. And, and we've been acting, um, we were going to do something. We were going to be part of a, a festival before the pandemic hit mm -hmm. to kind of say we were back, mm -hmm. but we were going to be the last announcement and COVID obviously <laughs> disrupted that. Damn. So, um, and, but now, uh, yeah, we are having, it, we are having discussions and we're just going to see, we're also having to put things together because we have members in the band who could be quite busy as well. So <laughs> that that on top of being being like on different continents, <laughs> right? <be> with. <laughs> well, but that works out good if if like we're going to Europe. You know, that actually is a benefit right there for us because then we can meet them in Europe, and that that would be pretty cool. You know, what I mean, we also got to think of a backup for here or something like that if they're was to be a, a scheduling problem of sorts. So yeah. taking all of that into account for sure. And I think we're, we're, we're getting things. It, it's, it's getting better. It's, it's, it's looking pretty good on some things. So we'll just see where that goes. I mean, obviously I, I apologize. I can't announce anything because <laughs> I have nothing, you know, there's nothing. Uh, I'm, you know, 
I got to make sure I don't want to go. I want to make sure there's a guarantee to do some of these yeah. things and all that. And uh, we recently got asked to do something and it was just, but it was so soon. And also when I was trying to put things together, it just was like, wow, you know, <laughs> scheduling was, was, was a bit hard to make that happen. And then you start sitting back and like, hey, you know, is that able to be done? But we definitely, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I want to do it. You know, I'm, I, I want to do it. And uh, I know my fiance, I know my fiance is asking me to do it and things like that. She wants to go. So, I mean, we're, yeah, we're, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what happens, man. I mean, I, I would love to get back out there and, and see what we could do. You know what I mean? So, so, so that means uh, the 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 band, especially with the new members, um, Rule and Andreas, that's kind of kind of open. If they if they're they're busy with their band, that and and you you would have the opportunity to play some gigs in the U.S. to 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 get uh, other uh, people to stand in and and do the shows with you. Yeah, I mean, of course, I would like the four of us that would be number one and i'm not about like uh you know uh, if bringing them to us and everything that that's fine i i don't have any worries about that i i, I want to do that with these guys because they're great um and but uh yeah it's a it is that's what makes it a little difficult it's not like what, what zero hour used to be and we had a studio and we could rehearse i mean we haven't even rehearsed or done anything this would be fly by our seats and just we're, we're just going to strap on the seatbelt and see where it takes us you know it could be a turbulent ride but you don't know unless you take the chances to do these things so and uh and we got a good group of guys you know that i think we can we can put it together so yeah it's it's exciting a little frightening at the same time but that's what life is anyway so <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah the, that that was the the wisdom of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um uh just just one more thing about um uh, agenda 21 is, is where 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 did you guys record it? Did you record every everyone where they are uh, or did you meet somewhere I got things started and and I did it here at my house. Luckily that was very easy. But then um with guitars, it's easier than with vocals yeah, and drums, right? Way. <laughs> but then, yeah, then the next step, you know, Rule had to get into a drum studio. Um, I will say the name wrong, but he had Kai Kohlkeller Studios, I want to say, in Germany. I'm it's, sorry, yeah. But... yeah, it's Kai Stahlenberg at Kohlkeller Studios. Yes. Perfect. I've Here's been the... there. <laughs> I, I... I, yeah. I've been there and recorded some cello oh, <laughs> some years ago. <laughs> that's that's very cool, man. Very well, cool. Well, yeah. yeah, and Kai was was great, man, to work with. And, and Kai is exceptional. So, yeah, it was very exciting. And, yeah, just to get things going. I mean, Rule was like, oh, we could go in and we'll hit it out over there. And then Andreas did it at his studio, which was great. And then Eric the same. And we we had, a, it, it took a little while because Eric, we, there was a little bit of, the, the music went pretty quick. And then we had to deal with some sonic issues to get the sonic right for the vocals. You know what I mean? Because that could be hard, you know, because uh, you could get some digital blasting of sorts because his vocals are very dynamic. So they could shoot all over the place and, and you got to just be careful with that. And then once we got a handle of that, things started to come together in a nice flow. So, yeah, I mean, and that was really the process. And then we went back with Kai and uh, had him and mixed it and master it. So, yeah, and then we were very pleased with how it came out, you know. So, yeah, no, I, very I, excited about it. So I guess you, you've been in contact with Kai uh, over the internet the whole time and... Uh, yeah. Speaking so, yeah, of it's like WhatsApp is when we're, you know, getting into conversations and things like that. Yeah, he's he's a really good guy. I did have one phone conversation with him, which was cool, you know, because we were kind of like doing a little bit of a, a pre-mix to kind of see, if, to get the feel if it was right or, or things of that nature. And it was definitely right with him. It was good. We just, 
he really had a, a good mix for us. We just had a couple things that were like, let's try this real quick and see if this is the right vibe. Because in a hour, you, you got to have a, a punchy snare and, and punchy guitars and, th- you know, you, there's certain things. And uh, he definitely had a great outlook sonically for what he, he wanted to produce for us, which was great. So, yeah, it came together. It was it was great, man. And then we were off and, and going. And it was, you know, it was, I, there are certain releases you do. I knew when we did the Towers of Avarice. I also want to say for Metamorphosis, too. When we did our first demo CD, though it was this was before it was Metamorphosis, you know what I mean? Because I still stand by the EP it was, 38 Minutes. That was just, uh, we were really proud of that. And then we just went the next level with really creating, like, this is a zero-hour sound with Towers of Avarice. And then to come here with... Um, Agenda 21, I mean, I feel that, yeah, it's just the listening experience. It, it's got the same feeling of, of those, those two releases we had back when. And I mean, I love Specs and Dark Deceiver and things like that, but I was channeling back into the, that kind of aspect of things. So I kind of want to have somewhat of a mix of those two mm-hmm. really. Because I mean, I, I loved like Union and things off of Metamorphosis and everything. So I was like, Let's keep some of that broken up stuff maybe as well. That it might be little, but it has something to do with the material, you know, in the <laughs> mind, you know, the thought process. So yeah, that's where it stands with that. And I feel agenda 21, man, it's it's definitely, I I, I definitely feel it's a special release, you know. It's got the material, man. Yeah, it's it it, it, it it's been out for a couple of days now. Um, how's the the reception been for you so far? Uh it, it it's been great. Yeah, it really has been great. I mean, uh, my brother just sent me one. Uh, uh, he said, dude, do you see this review? They gave you a 94 out of 100. I'm like, that's great, man. You know what I mean? So, and I saw another one that was 92 and we're getting press. I mean, we just uh, just had the interview just came out and Death Forever, um, Sweden Rock Magazine, uh, Rock Hard Italy, and I know others are coming out, which are exciting. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had an interview yesterday that I totally forgot about. Luckily, I saved myself. So, I mean, it's been a crazy <laughs> period of things going on. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's been really busy, man. Great. Maybe one last question. Uh, so, uh, thinking about future live dates, is there any songs from the Zero hour discography, you would say they will definitely you will definitely have to 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 bring that on back back on play, stage. You have <laughs> to play stratagem. You have stratagem. to play I, I mean Towers of Avarice, yeah, have to play Towers of Avarice and you have to play Subterranean too. I think that was our first single signal to come out. Yeah, you know I mean, and I love the Mize message. If we could, put, it all depends on the set, right? I'll play the whole thing, but nah. except for the ghost of yeah, the, the ghost of Don is a little different because I mean that was all keyboards and all that stuff, and I don't even know if like we don't even have the stuff from that back when. But yeah, um, but definitely, I mean, you definitely have to bring back. Uh, Towers material, and if we could do Union, I would love to do Union. Eyes of Denial was always a, a, a favorite for us to play with people. So, I mean, it's it, we're open. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I don't think if we don't do Stratagem or Subterranean or something like that, we <laughs> people would definitely come up to me after the show, like, what's going on, guys? So I think <laughs> we have to do that, right? So yeah, let's yeah. do it. No. I, uh, do, do you remember which which year did you play Proc Power Europe uh, last time? It was two. I think it was, I want to say was it two thousand eight or two thousand nine. One of those. Uh, it was actually one of the last ones we because we. I th- we yeah, th- yeah, I think it was two thousand eight because it was my very first one, and Cynic played there as well, and Eight Rocks. That's the one we supported. Yes. Cynic. Yep, that was the one. That was great, man. Yeah, yeah that, that was a great show. Great that was show. that was my very first Proc Power Europe uh, uh, well, of of right. of many to come and uh, yeah I do I do remember uh, being like my jaw dropping on the floor when when I saw you guys playing Stratagem oh. and Demise and Vestige. <laughs> right on, right? No, that was a great 
great show. The crowd was amazing. That that was that was we felt really good with that one. And that was that wasn't the we had a couple other shows that we were going to do, um, which I wish we had. You know, we were gonna do Prague Power Scandinavia, and we were also gonna do uh what was it i want to say like the nightmare fest or something like that that was in um poland but it it you know we my brother because of there's you know they have these unfortunate like health plans that you have and by the end of the year you need to do this if your deductibles up and all this other stuff he had to get the surgery and yeah he did have to get the surgery but i mean you go back and forth with all i mean that it, <sighs> All I can say is if, if you are suffering from things and it doesn't matter how good the doctors are or how great, you know, the care is supposed to be because he went to a Stanford doctor and everything, get as many opinions as you can. Yeah, you know I mean, because I know you can be volatile and you want, and if someone's telling you they're going to do something for you, you, you believe it because that's what you want to believe. But definitely do the research to take care of yourself and get many opinions. That's all just for any <laughs> best advice I could give you. That's all. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I, I really hope uh, you guys will be back on stage soon, be it on, um, in the U S or here in Europe um, yeah. or both. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. I, I mean, I would love to do it all. So we'll see, we'll see what uh, it won't be immediate, but, of things course. will come around for sure yeah yeah now now there's such a huge backlog of uh events and concerts that have been pushed back again and again over the last right. two years right so so everybody's like like, like there's a there's a huge traffic jam of concerts it, and like like exactly. the whole year is booked fully booked in every ve venue almost um yeah. but yeah of course uh you guys also have a um like the you like the musicians in the band have have a busy schedule with 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 other things uh so so I, so uh, because of that aspect as well it has to be planned uh quite yeah. in advance right yeah and yeah exactly we want to do it right and uh yeah and we went and go it <laughs> It will be some preparing, but we'll, we'll get things done. I, I, I feel good about that for sure. You know, we're all, we, a lot of us, we've been chatting and I, I can see that things are leaning in a good way. So we'll see what happens. Wonderful. That's great to hear. Thank you so much, uh, Jason. For right on, bro. <laughs> great to chat with you again, man. And thank you uh, for spreading the word about us, man. Really, that's that's good, man. Keep Prague alive. Prague metal, especially. Man. Absolutely. You guys out there, if you're listening, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the, the social media channels of Zero Hour to keep up to date if they gonna announce, uh, when they gonna announce uh, some live dates, right? And uh, of course, you can like and subscribe and comment and give a thumbs up and all that shit. <laughs> uh, for us as well, the Prague space, we always appreciate it just as the cup of tea, cup of coffee helps us out a lot. Thanks, Jason. Until Absolutely. next time. Yeah. Uh, keep spreading that prog love. That's right, bro. Right on. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik-Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik-Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.